Hello and welcome to this evening's TF Together session where we're going to be welcoming Professor Herman Haller. He's a professor of Italian language and literature at Queen's College and the Graduate Centre of the City University of New York and a member of the Academy and um, Correspondente Straniero is his official title, so a foreign member. And um, he's going to be discussing the Academia della Crusca, a leading institution in the field of research on the Italian language, revealing a little bit about its history and our many ongoing projects. And um, we'll all have seen uh, how the subject of the Italian language is of even more interest this year, given the 700th anniversary celebrations for Dante, for which the Academy, Academia is running some particularly fascinating events. Uh, one of those is a Dante word a day, where they are publishing 365 words or phrases from the works of Dante Alighieri as insight into the poet's vocabulary and style, with some explanatory notes giving us an opportunity to deepen our knowledge of Dante and his works. Uh, one of their other initiatives, which will undoubtedly be of interest for viewers, is Dentro la Crusca, Dentro Italiano, and these are virtual visits that allow us online access to the Academy. Um, the free guided itineraries are taking, uh, have been taking place since February and going on until October 2021. And they're available in Italian, English and French, with actor Francesco Gori playing the role of the founder of the Italian Language Academy, Leonardo Salviati, who we'll be hearing more about later on in today's talk. And information about all of those events and our many others can be found at this information here. And with that, I will bring on our guest for this evening's talk, uh, Professor Herman Haller. So thank you so much for joining us. Well, it's a great pleasure to visit Florence this evening, uh, virtually from New York City. Absolutely. And to pay a visit uh, to the Academia della Crusca with the readers and viewers of the Florentine magazine. Thank you very much, uh, Jane Farrell, for your interest in this topic and uh, including the Academia della Crusca in the series together. Um, I hope all of you are well, uh, your families, friends, and uh, during this unprecedented time of the pandemic. Florence has always been a favorite city ever since I studied there years ago and returned year after year. So I can hardly wait to be back in oh, okay. the city to visit France and visit the Academia. <laughs> so. Hopefully soon. Hopefully that won't be too far in the future. And perhaps before we really engage with our topic of discussion today, it might be an idea to give viewers a visual of the venue so that we will have a little insight into where we're talking about. Uh, the brief audio in the clip I'm about to show is in Italian, but it's accompanied by incredible shots. And so you'll see Francesco Gori playing the founder Leonardo Salviati, as I just mentioned there. Gentili messeri, graziose madonne, la buona giornata. Sono io messer Leonardo Salviati e fo professione di letterato. Molti dicono che fu io a fondare l'Accademia della Crusca e in effetti gli è vero. A dirla tutta però, prima che arrivassi io vera di già una consorteria di uomini scelti, amicissimi tra di loro che soleano ragunarsi nelle loro dimore a turno e pigliavano grandissimo piacere nel discorrere di letteratura e cose di lingua. Gli erano delle adunanze ghiribizzose che loro chiamavano, così per baia, cruscate. Ma giunto che fui io, nel 1582, la crusca divenne cosa seria. Un istituto dove si studia la lingua italiana. Insomma, un'accademia vera e propria So we have seen that stunning sight and perhaps you could tell us a little bit about the work that goes on there and uh, why is it called the Academia della Crusca also? So, so yes, the Academia della Crusca, uh, the Academy of the Chaff, um, can be described as the most important research institution of the Italian language. Uh, for studying and monitoring the Italian language. Uh, so as the word ac academy 
or Italian Academia says, the word goes back to Plato, uh, Plato's times, is then borrowed from Latin, uh, the academy meaning a society of learned persons organized to advance art, science, or literature. This is the Merriam-Webster definition, and of course this is what the academy is doing. So the academia produces and promotes state-of-the-art scholarship, linguistic and philolog philological scholarship, to advance our knowledge of the Italian language. And um, from its earliest documents uh, to today. So uh, from the Carta di Capo and the 10th century to uh, the uh, all the literary documents, non-literary documents uh, throughout uh, its history. Uh, the Academia also engages in ongoing projects, modern initiatives for the benefit of schools, universities, the great republic, uh, the country's institutions and uh, it fosters a linguistic education and linguistic consciousness of the Italian language among its speakers in Italy and abroad. And it also fosters uh, the appreciation and love of this beautiful language in Italy and throughout the world. Uh, so, um, um, in parentheses, the uh, Academy's pres current president, Claudio Marazzini, recently uh, wrote a book, published a book, L'Italiano è meraviglioso. Italian is a beautiful language, a great language. So, uh, as we celebrate the 700th anniversary of Dante Alighieri, this year we also celebrate the Italian language, since Dante had uh, clearly a crucial presence in the Academy's history. So the, the yes. Academia is housed in uh, the Villa Reale, which you just saw in this attractive uh, video, short video. It's a castle outside uh, Firenze, purchased in 1477 by the cousin of Lorenzo dei Medici, by Giovanni Pier Francesco. And uh, it's a magnificent site and uh, has also a beautiful garden. And I think just touching what you mentioned there about this year and how Italian language is receiving even more global attention, perhaps. Um, we we'll also have the news of the Museum of the Italian Language, which is going to be opened in the Santa Maria Novella complex. So there's certainly a lot of interest in uh, delving deeper into our understanding of the Italian language this year. Uh, and, the, and the many initiatives of the Academia as well have been fantastic in promoting and, and enhancing that interest in the Italian language. And just touching briefly on some of the history that you mentioned there, I have another brief clip that gives a bit of more of a visual to that, and then we can renew our conversation about it. L'Accademia della Crusca nasce a Firenze tra il 1582 e il 1583. Nel corso della sua lunga storia ne hanno fatto parte oltre 1300 accademici. Non solo filologi e linguisti, ma anche scrittori e scienziati. La simbologia della Crusca si riferisce al mondo della panificazione. E in particolare al processo di lavorazione della farina, durante il quale, appunto, l'eliminazione della crusca, ovvero la parte di scarto del grano, permette di ottenere il fior di farina. Allo stesso modo, infatti, gli accademici avevano come obiettivo il recupero, la conservazione e lo studio della buona lingua. Il vocabolario della crusca può essere considerato la prima opera lessicografica in senso moderno e infatti fu preso a modello anche dalle altre accademie europee. It's wonderful to see inside this venue when um, perhaps we can't visit right now and we're tuning in from somewhere all across the globe. So it's wonderful to have these clips. Um, there were some portraits appearing there that brings me on to my next question, which is about the founders of La Crusca. And in particular, if you could tell us a little bit about Leonardo Salviati and some of the illustrious people perhaps that have passed through the doors of the Academy. Uh, yes, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the Academia della Crusca has a formidable history mm. of uh, more than four centuries. It was founded um, between 1582 and 1583 by Leonardo Salviati. And um, 
uh, it first started in the 16th, late 16th century as a, a meeting place among friends, uh, as you just saw, uh, for pleasurable entertainment, um, discussion about uh, language, literature, and uh, the so-called cruscate, crusca uh, meetings, uh, but soon became a serious academy uh, with, the, uh, with uh, Salviati, and of course the dictionary which uh, uh, Salviati and his uh, colleagues, uh, academicians, uh, published in, uh, eventually published in 1612. So uh, the vocabulario is certainly uh, one of the major um, major elements of the Gruska, which made the Gruska famous. Uh, it is the first monolingual, great monolingual dictionary, and uh, based on uh, the, Grus the Gruska academicians tried to find uh, the best or purest Florentine language based on the work of the 14th century uh, Tuscan literary giants, Dante Alighieri, Boccaccio, right. Petrarch, uh, but also on lesser known Florentine writers, Volgarizzamenti, anonymous texts, and so forth, following Pietro Bembo's uh, 16th century um, um, recommendation and for uh, using literary Tuscan uh, as the future standard language. Mm -hmm. So uh, this was an enormous enterprise when you think about it, an enormous lexicographical enterprise uh, before the digital age, before yes. using uh, the uh, digital technologies. So an effort that began in 1590 and um, the dictionary uh, was then published uh, practically 20 years later and containing definitions, citations from different authors, etymologies. So it became a crucial reference for anybody who wanted to write in Italian. So you just imagine if a writer um, with a first language being Piedmontese dialect or, or Pugliese, uh, they had a point of reference uh, using the dictionary in their writing. So um, uh, this is an effort also um, which uh, began the um, the process, the evolution towards a unitary Italian language yes. in a country that's uh, strongly, heavily plurilingual. As we Absolutely. know, Italy, Italy, with all its numerous dialects and historical minority languages and so forth, um, it was uh, a very important enterprise. Uh, can I ask yes. how many dialects there are, actually? It's not a number I'm aware of. I can imagine there's many, but are you aware of how many? Uh, versions of Italian there are? Well, that's an interesting question. There are perhaps thousand dialects in Italy, yeah. but in other words, it's not it's it's not the question I could, yes. would be able oh, to okay. answer. Right. Uh, basically, uh, one talks about regional uh, areas, one talks about um, Florentine, one talks about um, Venetian and so forth, but uh, then there are, within Veneto, there are many, many other dialects, yes. uh, Trevigiano and so on, as in the other regions. So, um, but what's uh, interesting to note is that today, at a time when uh, Italians really, across the society, speak Italian, uh, it's also true that Italian dialects are still being used and spoken by uh, considerable segment of the Italian population and of course also abroad. Yes. So um, it's an interesting question, but um, the Crusca uh, did not suppress the dialects, obviously, but they proposed a language uh, for, uh, for the country. And of course, based on Florentine and we are celebrating your magazine. So uh, we're talking about the language of Florence, which became a historical basis. It's also interesting to note that the vocabulario had five editions. It didn't just have the one edition in 1612. Throughout the centuries, uh, it was expanded. And um, 
there were uh, non-Tusk, non-Florentine authors added, for example, Ariosto. Yes. And uh, so um, they, they started to introduce technical vocabulary and so forth and so on. So the last, the fifth edition uh, was printed. Uh, it's not a complete edition. Uh, it goes up to the letter O. And okay. it was published in 1923. Wow. So, um, but wonderful. Uh, today, all five editions can be accessed uh, uh, digitally. They're, ac they're accessible online. So anyone interested in a special word can look up the history and reconstruct uh, the history of an expression or, or, or a word very that easily. And that makes um, has me thinking then about what's your involvement then in terms of what's your work um, in terms of the Italian language and your particular area of interest. Before perhaps talking about it, if you don't, if you don't mind, we oh. you all saw the uh, there was a question about Kruska. Yes. Why uh, why do we call it Kruska? Oh, yes. And I think this was actually discussed in this video. Uh, it's interesting that in the uh, the, the, uh, the academicians decided um, to um, to find the finest language, and of course, this is what you do also when you're baking bread. Mm -hmm. So the production of bread is actually the metaphor that is being used. Uh, Kruska means chaff, so the worthless husks. Uh, so the idea of separating uh the uh, the husks from the grain to find the finest flour and mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, the motto a 1598 motto uh, il più bel fior ne coglie an adaptation from petrarch's uh, canzoniere um, finding the finest flower finding the finest language mm -hmm. so um if you walk around the Kruska Academy, you will see objects that have to do with bread, the bread production. You will see uh, closets uh, which look like, um, um, I mean, they're closets where bread was uh, preserved, but actually that's where they put the, uh, the, the papers for the dictionary. And then you find certain chairs which have to do the, uh, with this and also the, especially the pale, the shovels, Yes. which are very beautiful and uh, the academicians had to receive the shovel um, and um, they could they had to choose an image and then uh, a surname salviati for example used uh, um, the um, uh, his own surname and um, and then uh, a verse, they also had to add uh, a verse, from, usually from Dante or from Petrarch. So uh, this is actually a wonderful art treasure we find in one of the sale of the Academia della Crusca. And of course, Salviati was a, he was called Linfarinato, I was going to mention it. Linfarinato, covered by flour. And uh, <laughs> the image is of... Uh, of a uh, riccio, a hedgehog, mm. and who is looking for the best uh, food, of course, the best grain and flour. And, um, and so the academicians adopted this uh, metaphor for finding the finest language. Uh, also interesting is that the Kruska becomes the model in Europe for academies, for linguistic academies. For example, for the Académie Française, which was founded in 1635 and uh, with a dictionary that came out much later and uh, in 1694, but also it became the model for the Academia Real uh, right. in Spain. So um, the dictionary with the Academia, which was founded in 1713, so much later. So as you can see, uh, the Kruska had a real great impact in the uh, building of um, uh, languages and the uh, multilingualism in, in European nations. Yes. And 
I am intrigued to find out um, about your own linguistic work, if you don't mind giving us a quick uh, overarching summary. So, um, yes, uh, what have I been, um, what is my work about? First of all, uh, teaching, of course, teaching mm. the Italian language and literature and culture, Italian linguistics in the city university system has been uh, uh, one of the central uh, contributions, I guess. I think uh, teaching is very important, um, mm. promoting the language, this beautiful uh, Italian language um, in abroad also. And uh, among my research interests and publications, there are several areas. I have worked much on the uh, Italian language abroad uh, right. in the United States, especially in New York City. Uh, as you know, Ita New York City is a very Italian city. There's a lot of uh, people of Italian origin. And so um, um, in studying the, uh, the linguistic uh, situation of Italian and dialects and English, in other words, the variation, the varieties used by Italians, Italian-Americans, and... Um, studying language maintenance, language loss, language attitude, uh, language contact. This was this is one of the areas which uh, interests me a great deal. But uh, other areas, I've always had a great interest in Italian dialects, right. which, of course, um, I discovered Italian dialects when I was a student in Italy. And, and then in uh, New York, I rediscovered Italian dialects among my students. So um, I uh, developed an interest in uh, also in the written tradition in in dialect. In other words, the uh, uh, the tradition of Italian literature in dialect, mainly poetry and uh, theater, and uh, which uh, goes parallel to the great uh, tradition in Tuscan. Yes. So uh, and uh, last but not least. Um, I uh, I'm interested in Italian English lexicography, bilingual lexicography, and um, uh, especially uh, a dictionary I uh, worked on for several years. Uh, John Florio's A World of Words. Uh, right. John Florio was a linguist and teacher in London, and uh, he uh, produced uh, the first uh, comprehensive in uh, Italian English. Uh, bilingual dictionary and which was published in 1598 and uh, so this um, is an intriguing figure he was a teacher a writer a translator and the lexicographer uh, and so um, uh, this is uh, also an area that interests me very much and I can I continue to work on excellent and just to uh, add another bit of visual imagery to our discussion, I have another clip here of the library, and then perhaps we can discuss some of the treasures that are in that library. La Biblioteca dell'Accademia della Crusca è la più importante biblioteca in Italia per gli studi di linguistica e di storia della lingua italiana. Negli anni 60 del 1900 la biblioteca è stata interamente riorganizzata nelle sezioni che ancora oggi la caratterizzano. Il ricchissimo patrimonio della biblioteca, oltre 150.000 volumi, è costituito principalmente da studi e opere sulla lingua italiana. La biblioteca possiede anche molto materiale antico e di pregio. We got a glimpse of some very really interesting looking works. So perhaps you could tell us a little bit about um, what can be found in the Academia's library. Well, uh, we could say that it's uh, most likely Italy's most, uh, Italy's largest and uh, most comprehensive and best uh, linguistic library. Uh, right. In other words, um, you find specialized works on Italian linguistics, Italian philology. You find uh, editions. There are about 150,000 volumes in this uh, in this library, and uh, 
and you find uh, a lot of works on the history of the Italian language. This is one of the principal um, fields, disciplines that uh, the Academia della Crusca promotes. And so um, you find editions in Cunabula, you find Cinque Centine um, and early prints. And uh, so uh, for the specialist in a variety of areas, uh, it's just a treasure trove. Absolutely. And, uh, and of course, there is the archive, which um, you have seen in the in this video, and uh, with um, the uh, papers uh, of, for the preparation of the vocabulario, in other words, um, how the vocabulario uh, came about and and the uh, the enormous work behind, which uh, was actually uh, established by Severina Parodi um, uh, several years ago. So I also wanted to mention that um, at one point, in addition, of course, to uh, uh, I would like to mention the the president, the current president yes. of the Academia della Crusca, who is Claudio Marazzini, yes. and also mention uh, previous presidents, uh, Nicoletta Maraschio, uh, who is now honorary president. Uh, she is. She was the first, or she is the first woman president of the Academia della Crusca, and, right? And then also um, uh, Francesco Sabatini, who is also honorary president right now. Uh, he preceded Nicoletta Maraschio, and before them Giovanni Nencioni, um, the dean, really a dean of uh, the history of the Italian language, great linguist, and so. Um, and in addition to these, we have, of course, many uh, individual, many academicians who, through its history, um, were affiliated with the Kruska. There are about 1,300, all in all. Uh, and uh, among these uh, interesting figures, such as uh, Alessandro Manzoni, um, who were uh, great writers, Vincenzo Monti, uh, Carducci, but also foreign writers, Voltaire, the French Voltaire, and also scientists, uh, Galileo Galilei and uh, Marcello Malpighi and so forth. So um, it's, a, it's a, 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 an academy with a fantastic history. Really, very much so. It's fascinating to hear about those figures having been involved too. It wasn't something I was aware of. So that's, it seems endlessly fascinating, really. It seems like there's just so much to learn and explore about the Academy and just when you mentioned the archives there I do have another brief clip that gives us a little bit more uh, about that. L'archivio della Crusca è il più importante archivio per lo studio della storia della lingua italiana ed è l'unica testimonianza dell'attività dell'istituto fin dalla sua fondazione. È distinto in due sezioni l'archivio storico, che raccoglie le carte prodotte dall'Accademia fin dalla sua fondazione, la sezione più importante del patrimonio dell'archivio storico è costituita dal materiale preparatorio del vocabolario. In anni recenti, accanto all'archivio storico, intitolato a Severina Parodi, si è costituita anche la sezione degli archivi aggregati, che ospita i fondi che raccolgono i documenti di letterati, linguisti e filologi variamente collegati all'Accademia. Uh, I was just thinking, some people might query what further study can be done. What else is there um, to delve into about a language? Of course, a language is ever evolving. I think that's what makes it so fascinating is that language is always changing. Um, even there's been discussion about using English words in Italian, uh, such as the one that we're all using perhaps too frequently at the moment, which is lockdown and how that's entered um, daily usage in the Italian language. Um, so that's some of the ongoing relevance of the Academy. But what are some of their other ongoing projects and their current activities that you could tell us about? Yes, the Academy is uh, involved in a great number of uh, projects and initiatives. Um, to uh, summarize, perhaps we could say that the ongoing activities of the academia are uh, lexicography, 
uh, publications and conferences, language consultation, uh, and uh, reaching out to schools. So, for example, for lexicography, uh, there is a the the Ovi Opera Opera del Vocabolario Italiano, uh, which uh, publishes the Tesoro, the Clio Tesoro del della lingua italiana delle origini, in other words, uh, the language of the first centuries, from the origins to up to 1400. Another ongoing digital project, di digital dictionary, is the Vocabolario Dantesco, uh, the Dante uh, vocabulary. It's uh, a work that, has, uh, that is being published since 2018, and uh, it will... Uh, it will have the language, the Italian language, of all the works of Dante, uh, which uh, is going to be a tremendous resource. There are other projects, Parole dell'arte da, Le da Leonardo Avasari, on art history. Uh, there is L'Italiano in Cucina, it's a project on Italian in gastronomy, uh, uh, quite an important aspect between 1891 and 1945. And there is also the OIM, uh, Osservatorio degli Italianismi nel mondo. It's a digital dictionary uh, based on uh, a, uh, a dictionary produced by Haro Stamarjohan, and uh, it is uh, it is actually um, uh, directed by Luca Serianni, uh, Mattias Heinz, and Lucilla Pizzoli, and. Uh, no, they're not only anglicisms in the Italian language, as uh, you just mentioned before, yeah. there are also a lot of Italianisms right. in, in the languages of the world. Of and course. this uh, digital dictionary will actually uh, study and pursue uh, the Italianisms throughout uh, the world's languages. And then there are publications. The Kruska has three journals on philology, lexicography, and grammar. It hosts conferences, it uh, meeting, it sponsors the Piazza delle Lingue. Right. Uh, it's an event uh, to draw attention to multilingual Europe. Yes. It sponsors, together with the Ministero Affari Esteri, the Settimana della Lingua Italiana nel Mondo, uh, the, uh, the week of the Italian language in the world. And um, with a topic, this year it's going to be Dante. And... Um, uh, then language consultation is very important. The Kruska receives uh, questions from the public uh, every week really? and question about doubts of language use, about, you just mentioned lockdown, yes. uh, anglicisms, and yes. so forth. And uh, young scholars uh, at the Academia uh, reply, uh, or academicians reply to some of these questions selectively. Mm -hmm. uh, a wonderful website I would like to, all, to invite all of you yes. to, to uh, look at. It's, um, it's a website managed by Marco Biffi. Uh, and then also there is the outreach to schools. There is a website, um, Kruska Scuola. Okay. Uh, and so uh, the Kruska is not only doing historical research and uh, research about contemporary linguistic issues, um, in Italy and beyond and yes. abroad. It's also um, very much concerned with the language um, as it is um, taught in, uh, in Italy, in the right. Italian schools. Right. And, uh, and then, of course, there are many projects for the Dante um, celebrations. Right. I just mentioned the Vocabolario Dantesco, right. uh, and there are many others. There is... Um, an exhibition, Dante nella Crusca, uh, which is uh, monitored by Domenico De Martino. Uh, there is um, uh, Dante Proverbs for Schools. Uh, there is, uh, uh, and then there is an exhibition uh, which, is, uh, which will be uh, held at the Museo della Lingua Italiana, yes. uh, across from the um, uh, train station in, this, in the complex of Santa Maria Novella and which is um, uh, organized uh, by Nicoletta Maraschio and other uh, historians of the language. So there's a, there's a very wide range Absolutely. of activities, as you can see, yes. in which the Kruska is engaged. 
very much and there's it seems like there's so much um i think the contemporary aspect i think particularly is interesting and how um the italian language there, there's ever more to discuss and ever more to debate as language changes and as you mentioned they're multilingual europe and how that's changing language usage um is fascinating as well i think and how and the, how the Kruska is engaged in that study and um, it must seem constant it must seem that there's fresh studies emerging at a ferocious rate i would imagine um, um but there is a few questions after popping in here that we might take a look at now um one question here is from Jolie, who has asked, and um, that uh, rather you mentioned that the academy took words and phrases mostly from Petrarch and Dante. Did they also consider Boccaccio? So I wonder if you could take a little bit um, of time to discuss um, some of the writers that have influenced the, the studies there. Yes. As a matter of hello, Jolie, I remember you as my student. So, oh, right. <laughs> um, and. Um, Yes, uh, the Boccaccio is very much also a source. In other words, the the academicians chose uh, the uh, the literary Tuscan, the lit the, the literary language um, of a very high level of uh, in Tuscan uh, as the foundation for the dictionary. And as I mentioned before, also uh, not only of these great uh, Tuscan authors, but um, also of others, none not very well known, Florentine or Tuscan, Tuscan authors. So, um, so yes. And what does this mean? What does it mean? It's basically that the language uh, is um, very, um, very uh, sophisticated language, uh, a literary language that is primarily written through its history, while um, people speak dialects. Yes. Um, and uh, and therefore, uh, what my students always um, find puzzling is the fact that um, with the knowledge, with proficiency in contemporary Italian, uh, of course, uh, sort of an advanced uh, proficiency, they are able to somehow understand at least some of the works written by Boccaccio right. uh, or by Dante or by, uh, uh, by Petrarch. Um, up to a point. I'm not right. talking about uh, interpretation, but uh, they recognize the language. So uh, we could then say, yes, uh, the language lived the Italian language based on Tuscan uh, two centuries before it was codified. In other words, it was codified in the 16th century, uh, choosing a language that was used in writing, in literature during the 14th century, uh, right. basically. So uh, the fact that the language uh, living in the books did not undergo a huge amount of changes. Well, linguistically, of course, there were a lot of changes, mm. but uh, would be not the point, not this. Um, I, I think you're all encouraged to, uh, to go into the dictionary of the, into the vocabulario and, um, and look up some of the uh, words that are of particular interest and so and see what what is has been included yes. because you will see a lot of reference to Dante to to Petrarch and so forth in the vocabulario yes and I have another question here um is there an earlier ac academy founded so I think that uh, you mentioned there about how this formed the model for French and Spanish linguistic academies so could you tell us a little bit about whether the Academia de la Crusca was the first or where does it stand on a timeline there yes it's uh, the Academia de la Crusca is considered the oldest linguistic li uh, academy in other words I'm not talking about different other uh, types of academies, uh, literary academies and so forth, but in terms of uh, language, uh, the Italian language, we can certainly say that it has been the, it was the first, um, the oldest um, linguistic uh, academy um, in Europe. Well, and was it always on the same site or has it changed throughout history, you were aware? No, it has been. It was. It was housed in, uh, in different sites, okay. uh, in the city in Florence, yes. and um, and then also um, 
and only relatively recently it was then housed uh, in the Castello, in the Villa di Castello, right. which I think was is a wonderful uh, site. Yes. And, uh, and of course, um, um, it's. Uh, I would also like to acknowledge, incidentally, um, the uh, the staff of the Academia, uh, Silvia Franchini, um, Paolo Pelardinello, uh, Domenico De Martino, and so forth, um, who are so instrumental the in the work they're doing and to keep the academy running it would not uh, be able to run otherwise so there is a permanent staff there is a permanent um there the people working at the academy um, every day and of course now have been able to work remotely uh, yes. which has certainly been difficult but uh, uh admirably so so I have great admiration for their work very much, and I think that the evidence of all that hard work is um, very visible in terms of the amount of initiative, the number of initiatives, and of course the virtual visits that uh, people are encouraged to have a look at on this website and on their social channels too, because there's really constant updates of interesting information, articles, and um, with a linguistic focus. So I certainly encourage our viewers to check out those um, sites as well. And just before we close then, ha have we covered everything you want to include there? I feel like there's so much we could discuss, but I just want to make sure we got in your key points. Uh, well, I'm certainly, I'm certain there are many, many other aspects we, we could discuss yes. and delve in, but um, <clears throat> Basically, uh, I would just like to encourage you all, all the viewers and uh, who are uh, living in Florence in Italy and have an interest, are Italianists perhaps, or have an interest in the Italian language, teach the language, to promote it, to continue to, uh, to study, research it, and to promote uh, this beautiful language. And, uh, uh, since, uh, and of course, the culture, the Italian culture language is the vehicle for a fantastic culture as we all know it yeah. but also uh, it's also the, the vehicle of uh, a great uh, commercial enterprise uh, as we know italy is uh, an, on a global stage to in these days so it's uh, it's a language which i consider very important and um, so um, i certainly want to um uh, encourage everyone to perhaps visit at one point the Kruska and uh, and especially visit the website which is indeed very very rich and mm -hmm. diverse so um, you could also become uh, uh, a member of Amici della Kruska and uh, Kruska has um, different um, ways of um, connecting with the public and uh, you could uh, look into that uh, there's a giornalino, La Crusca per voi, and uh, so many other things. So, um, uh, with this, I also wanted to wish you all una buona Pasqua. Ah, buona Pasqua, absolutely. Thank you so much. It's been so interesting to um, delve into the Italian language more, especially as someone who isn't uh, a mother tongue Italian speaker. It really enhances. Um, our understanding of the Italian language to um, gain some of these insights and also to be encouraged to delve into it even further um, so that we can also share in the beauty of being able to speak uh, such a magical and musical language and um, that we all so much enjoy. And um, so thank you so much for your time, Professor. And um, I will thank also everyone who's tuned in today. If you are interested, you can find the rest of our TF Together sessions at the link below. And uh, with that, as you said, Buona Pasqua. Yeah.